Hello, I'm Dr. Tom Stark, CEO of Triple Equans, a consulting firm for algorithmic trading and AI in finance. We do weekly analysis, tips and strategies on quantitative trading on this channel. If you are new here and like what we do, consider subscribing and sharing with other people that would benefit from this type of content. Let's jump right in. Calculating P&Ls and backtests can be surprisingly tricky at times. Traders are often surprised when their calculations of realized and unrealized P&Ls don't match up. Today, I will show you how it can be done and how to think about it. To start with, we create an arbitrary price series from a normally distributed set of random numbers. Of course, you could also use market data from your favorite instrument. It doesn't matter so much here as we are focused on calculating strategy P&L curves. Next, we create a backtest. In this backtest, we loop through our price data, calculate two moving averages, and whenever the two moving averages cross, we change from short to long, and vice versa. This part of the code shows a switch from a long to a short entry. When the second moving average is smaller than the first, and we are not short, we first calculate the realized P&L, which is the profit of the whole trade. But first we want to make sure that we are already in a position by using the if in post condition. For long trades we subtract the entry price from the current price and for short trades we do the opposite. This of course is a simplified backtest where we assume perfect execution, zero spreads and no commissions. Note that we update the entry price after the P&L calculation, otherwise they would always be zero. We also update our trade direction with in pause. Exit times are captured in the list T, which we need for plotting our results later. Now that we've handled entries and exits, let's plot the realized P&L of the strategy. This looks quite good. However, it does not tell us anything about our performance during the trades. For that, we need to calculate the unrealized P&L. It is vitally important that the two P&L calculations match up. Otherwise, our backtest will most likely give the wrong results, one way or the other. When you write your own P&L calculations, please make sure you always match up realized and unrealized P&Ls for testing. It is very easy to get this wrong. For the unrealized P&L, we only need this one expression, which contains a list of prices Px and a list of positions pos that are recorded during the backtest. So what's going on here? In the unrealized P&L expression, we multiply the price change from the previous to the current price with the current positions and take the cumulative sum of all the products. So if our position is long or plus one and the price change is negative, we record an incremental loss at the time step and vice versa. Once we've done that, we can plot the results. In some cases, we have significant drawdowns that are not apparent when we only calculate the unrealized P&L. You might also notice that the final realized and the final unrealized P&L does not agree exactly. This is because our backtest ends in the middle of a trade and there is a residual unrealized profit for that. That's all for today. In the next video, I will show you how to calculate P&Ls for portfolios. If you would like to have a look at the accompanying Jupyter Notebook for all the codes, you can find the link in the description box below. There is so much more we can incorporate into our quantitative toolbox. Stay tuned for the next part of the series. We also have more resources in the description box below. If you want to learn more in-depth quantitative trading, join us at our online courses described below.